All right, what we're going to do today is accounts payable, which is Excel 5. We're first going to finish up Excel 4 that we were working on yesterday, and then we'll move on um, to Excel 5. So what I'm going to do is review some of the stuff that we did yesterday, and then we're going to move on um, to Excel 5 and showing you some new stuff from today. So what is the first thing you notice up here? What's going on with these columns? Can I see all the words up here in my titles? I can't, can I? So you have two options. You can right click and go to column width and say OK. Or you can click and drag. If you want to auto fit, another option is to double click in between each of the columns up top and it'll auto fit, which will make it the smallest space yet fitting all the words that are available in that column. Okay, so if you want more space, just click and drag and make it a little larger. It's totally up to you. Then these columns headings need to be centered. I just highlight them and hit the center button up on the home tab. Then it wants you to change the width of row one. I do that by right clicking row height and change it to 72. Okay. So once I've done that, what it's going to ask you to do is to insert word art. We're going to insert word art by going to insert word art. You can choose whatever font looks fun to you. And you're going to type the word game stop. Then you're going to highlight this. And you can either right click or you can go up to the home to change the font and the size, the font size. I think the easiest way is just to highlight it and right click. It wants you to change it to Joker, man, and then it wants you to change the size to 36. After you do this, you're going to click, drag it up here to the very top. If you want it to be perfectly centered, you can make this box the same size as the number of columns that you have, and it'll center it in the middle. Then we're going to center and merge each row individually by highlighting A2 to G2, and we're going to hit Merge and Center. Do the same thing in row three, and we're going to do the same thing in row four. Once again, this is on the Home tab, just Merge and Center. Don't forget to highlight the cells that you want to merge and center. If you just come here and hit merge and center, it's not going to work. You have to highlight the cells that you want to merge and center, which in this case would be A4 to G4, and select merge and center. Okay? Then the next thing that it wants us to do is to change the format of the amount build. You have two choices here. You can change it to currency, or if you'd like to do it manually, which is a little bit more difficult, you can have do two decimal places, and then you can insert the comma. It won't have the dollar signs, but it still shows up with two decimal places and comma. I personally think the easiest way to do it is to change it to currency because it's money. So I just highlight, go up to the Home tab, the Number section, and select Currency. Now, what we have next here is a percent, 0 0.04, 0 0.04, 0 0.06, etc. I want to show this in percent value. If I put a percent sign behind it, it might think it's text, right? We don't want it to think it's text. We want it to think it's number so we can use it in formulas and functions. So we are going to highlight the column, and then we're going to come here, and we're going to select the percent. If you wanted more decimal places, you could add them, but for this assignment, you don't need any decimal places, so you can just leave it just like that. So then you're going to move on, and you'll do the purchase discount. The purchase discount is equals the amount billed. Multiplication is using an asterisk, the percent discount. Everybody see that? So we're going to press Enter. Okay. Once we've done that, what's wrong with this? doesn't have 
decimal places, does it? It's not currency. So we change this to currency, but this is money too, right? So what I'm going to do is all of this is going to be money. So I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to highlight this whole section from D9 all the way down to G34. And all at once, even if there's not numbers in there right now, I'm going to change it to currency. So then when I enter this, it'll automatically do it for me. Now, should I retype this a whole bunch of times? No, we don't want to retype it a whole bunch of times. We want to take our fat plus sign to a skinny little plus sign, and we want to click and drag. Is there another way to do that? There is, isn't there? If we highlight and we come here and we say fill down under the home tab, fill down, it'll do the same thing. I personally think, take my fat little plus sign to a skinny little plus sign, drag all the way down is the easiest. Plus it makes you all laugh. So the subtotal would be equals the amount billed, right? So we have the amount billed minus the purchase discount. So this is the discount we're giving them. Then the sales tax is 8.25%. So we're going to say equals the amount billed or the subtotal? The subtotal, right? Because the amount billed isn't what we charged them. We're gonna, we got this purchase discount. We're giving them a nice little discount here. So point. 0.825, so E9 times 0 0.0825. Now the amount owed is equals the subtotal plus or minus the sales tax. Plus the sales tax and you press enter. Now I'm going to take all three of these. I'm going to take my fat little plus sign to my skinny little plus sign and scroll it all the way down. Just did all that work for me, didn't it? It's a beautiful thing. Now, we have the totals, average, maximum, minimum. This is where we're going to use all these functions. We've used functions in some of the Excel lessons we've done previously, but I'll review them with you real quick. Totals, so this is just where we're going to total everything up. We're just going to sum that. The average, We come here to the drop down on the home auto sum menu, go to average. Now it's just selecting this above. I don't want it to do that. So I'm going to come up here and highlight everything that I want it to average from B9 all the way down to B34. The max or maximum is the same. It doesn't default to the correct range of cells. So you need to go highlight the correct range of cells, which is B9 to B34. And then last but not least is the minimum. This is going to find the minimum number, the minimum amount billed from B9 to B34. Now what we can do is we can click and we can drag this all the way across. The only problem we have is here. Is this money or is this a percentage? It's a percentage, so I need to change this back to a percentage. Okay, what's this right here? This is in our notes. Do you all remember? What's that number sign about right there? What's that mean? It means that this column is too small. So if I make this column larger, does everything fit now? Yes. So this is all the new stuff you're going to learn for Excel 5, which is accounts payable. One thing you've been forgetting, let me remind you. Some of you have been forgetting to insert your header. It says it in the directions, but do not forget to insert your header. There's still three spaces up here. So to insert on your left, you put your name. In the middle, it's going to tell you your name of your file. And then last but not least is today's date. So today is 2-20-2014. Okay. 
One other thing that you need to remember, am I on one page right now? I am not on one page, am I? Do not forget we always want to print on one page because we do not want to use extra paper. So go to the page layout and say width one page, height one page. Okay. So you guys are going to finish up Excel 4 that you were working on yesterday. I know a lot of you needed some extra time on that. And then we are going to move on to Excel 5. My goal is by the end of the day for you to have 4 and 5 completed. Okay. Thank you.